Welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast, where we take a look inside the lives of the accomplished and successful businessmen and women. We'll get up close and personal with the founders of booming startups. So lean in and prepare to carry away something to skyrocket your own business. Please subscribe to our show and do leave us a review. It means a lot to us. Now, here's your host, Rajiv. Hey, listeners, welcome to the Entrepreneur Talk Show. I'm your host, Rajiv Unikrishnan, and this is the show where we talk about entrepreneurship and speak to great founders, entrepreneurs, and investors. Today we have with us Nara Karyappa, founder at The Ultimate Toolkit and also the owner and principal designer at Feel Good Design. Welcome, Sunera. Hi. So The Ultimate Toolkit is based on an idea to create a social innovation platform as a process of social interactions and design thinking between individuals to reach certain outcomes. A, right. a bit about Sunera, she holds a master's degree in design from the School of Design, Hong Kong. She has been working in the creative design industry since 2011 and has worked across a range of different verticals. Again, uh, welcome to the show, Sunera. Do fill in the gaps, if any, in the intro and do let us know what's going on in your world today. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, well, um, you know, I'm at, um, I've recently been um, um, funded at, uh, from a government, so I've, I've been also given great. a workspace at the School of Design, which mm-hmm. is great. So I'm sitting there. Um, and I'm not sure if, uh, if, if you know about this building, but, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, one of those very futuristic Star Trekky looking, um, uh, buildings in the middle of a university. Um, so lovely weather from here. So okay. that's, that's what's basically where okay. I'm right so, now. So before we get into work, first, any passions yeah. outside of work? Um, it would have to be, um, <laughs> It would have to be uh, movies, watching movies and TV shows. Okay. I'm a big uh, geek, so um, I'm currently watching Designated Survivor and I'm waiting for the next episode to come out. <laughs> okay. And uh, <laughs> um, apart from that, um, uh, I love writing. Um, um, I keep a journal and uh, yeah. Great. My so how did the Ultimate Toolkit start? I mean, what's the, uh, where, where did the idea come from? Um, so yeah, I mean, like you said about my background, I've, I've been a designer, um, uh, first a graphic design, but design has been, you know, at the core of everything I've, I've done. Um, and when I was doing my masters here, um, um, in Hong Kong, I, um, wanted to do something with communities and design. Uh, so, you know, a design can solve anything kind of an attitude, um, Correct. Uh, towards, you know, some of the world's largest problems needs to be adopted. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure you agree with this, but our generation, um, you know, no longer responds to traditional systems uh, or sermons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is a need of, uh, you know, design. There's a need of creativity um, in various societal sectors. Um, and so that's, that basically stemmed the idea um, for me to uh, use design for a social cause. Okay. And what would the vision be ultimately for for the toolkit? Uh, So the vision would be to expand this uh, framework um, to, you know, different um, ages. So a younger audience um, to schools, to colleges, um, because that is where, um, you know, issues like harassment or um, uh, discrimination starts from. Mm -hmm. So that would be the, be the bigger goal, to use the same framework for other issues, bullying, harassment, discrimination, or different ages. All right. So did you start this on your own or any uh, co-founders with you? Um, so, yeah, it's actually just me. Okay. <laughs> By myself. Uh, it does get lonely. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but honestly, I do prefer um, that um, I've, I've had the courage to do this by myself. And, and that's been, uh, I've been really lucky to have, um, you know, great mentors to guide me along the way. So, great. All right. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, so how does the entire product work? Okay. Um, yeah, good question. <laughs> so, um, this what I do is um, basically provide um, innovative workshops for policy making uh, in companies. Okay. Um, so you know each company has a responsibility to their employees, um, you know, to have a policy, whether it's in um, uh, to protect them from harassment or discrimination or um, you know gender equality. Um, they 
they have a legal um, requirement to have this. But what's uh, existing right now in the market is, you know, a one-sided conversation where employees are not involved at all. It's yep. legal. It's a, it's an issue of legal and compliance. Um, so that's where the toolkit is, is is a bit disruptive, and we are trying to, uh, you know, get the employees to make their own policies, get them to say what's what's um, okay and what's not okay in their office, um, and you know, we're doing that through design thinking activities, um, which you know will enable them to empathize with the issues better. Okay. So how does I mean when you say design thinking is how does how do you how does design come into this play? Um, okay, so um, what design thinking is um, basically uh, using a different um, thinking method to existing business models or existing uh, traditional ways of doing things. Um, so by design thinking, what I just mean is that uh, we take a very creative approach towards the activities that um, we get the employees to do. Yep. Um, it it enhances collaboration amongst the employees. So it's not just, uh, you know, one side of conversation, like I said, but it's not just the employee doing this within themselves. They, they are involved with other employees. They work as a group. So they work in collaboration with each other to, for a common goal. Um, and that's basically what, what uh, design thinking, the, the, the design thinking workshop does. And you're right now uh, only in Hong Kong. Right, we're only in Hong Kong, um, but of course, if if uh, there is a company in Singapore or India who mm -hmm. who is uh, wanting to get this workshop conducted, then um, well, we would go there to do that. So, since you just started, do you do you approach companies or they approach you? Um, companies or or uh, NGO, you said? No, no. So, uh, do companies approach you, or you go out uh, into the market to kind of uh, um, spread the word? No, it's it's completely me doing okay. that right now, right. Um, because of yeah because of the novelty of the product. Um, right. So it's um, has to be okay. it has to start with me first. And is this completely social or any revenue attached for you? Or the no, company? absolutely. It's 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 a revenue model. Okay. So um, we are not we are not you know focusing on being an NGO. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it comes from, you know, <laughs> experience in, in doing things for free, but that leaves you no money of to course, of continue course. the stage process, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, you're launched, uh, if I'm correct, you're launched on Indiegogo in, on March 2017, right? Right, right. And so, um, was right, the camp did the campaign end on March 1st or did it start on March 1st? So, it, it started um, it started on in March uh -huh. and... Uh, I'll, I'll, it's actually a really good point that you brought up because this is a good learning uh, case study for everyone who's listening. Uh, we completely failed in our Indiegogo campaign. Okay. Um, it just ended, um, you know, a week back, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, there were there were a lot of things I learned um, from doing this. So I would I would, you know, suggest uh, all startups to start early rather than yeah, later. Yeah. There's, there's no enough preparation you can do for something like this unless you actually just start it. Of course, of course. And I wish someone had told me that uh, sooner <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because then, you know, what you, um, my product is completely B2B and, uh, you know, uh, crowdfunding campaigns like Kickstarter and Indiegogo do not support that or if correct, they do, correct. it's really, really hard to work on a B2B uh, product. Um, and so that was my learning and, and, and I don't regret it. Um, I, I wouldn't do it again. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm thankful. Okay, so the government uh, funding happened during this time. Uh, it happened before this. Yeah, okay. we got a seed fund um, from a government organization in Hong Kong. Um, so yeah. after you got the fund, you went on Indiegogo. Yeah, yeah. Um, because there there are two revenue models to this uh -huh. uh, to my business. Uh, one is, of course, a product um, which is, you know, it can be sold and anyone anywhere oh, can okay. purchase okay. and conduct this workshop. But then there are actual, these actual conducting workshops which happen um, in in Hong Kong. Um, so for the product, for the basis, for the the basis of the product, we went on Indiegogo just to see, it. you know, the market would be. Okay. Yeah. So for conducting the workshops, that's where you got the seed funding. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Great. 
so i mean what were the challenges you faced of course other than the uh failure on indiegogo i mean what are the other challenges you faced starting up i know hong kong is a good market to start right yeah um so hong kong yeah hong kong is a great um good place to start uh, no doubt um and you know there's there's enough support and advice and mentorship and funding that you can get um but there is a, and even you know starting the getting the business registered as well as is easy it yeah, took me yeah. 20 minutes i'm not kidding <laughs> but uh where this takes a uh, backfall is opening a bank account in hong kong okay. and they recently changed the laws uh, last year because there were quite a few fraud cases correct um, that that uh, surfaced so it became increasingly hard for a startup to um you know open a bank account and my the criteria for me getting funding was to have a hong kong bank account so it was almost you know um you can't continue with one without the other and um um yeah and you know most of the banks i went to wanted to see a profit of 500000 dollars wow uh, already yeah and you know that's obviously not what you know a startup Absolutely. is yep so um that, that that was a bit of uh, you know um a difficulty <laughs> okay to, so you, you started this straight out of university yeah so um, so, so mm-hmm. um yeah honestly I started um after university I looked for jobs tried to do that uh-huh. and um I I I wasn't getting anywhere and realized that um I was getting a lot of consulting projects on a freelance basis and so that's how feel good design came into the making because I realized it was much easier to work as a consultant in Hong Kong rather than a full time job got it and um, I love my flexibility and you know realized that uh, I'd already got the research done for this project yep. why don't I just make it a business okay. and then I started applying for funding and, and okay. so on so forth. so that answers my question is oh, when did you know you were meant for entrepreneurship okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, over time uh, who would you say has inspired you um Okay um at the cost of sounding like a narcissist I would I would say it's uh, myself because um that's, that's the first time I've got to answer like this in all my 107 shows okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah because honestly you know you are you are your biggest risk and you know you're even bigger influencer if you if you want to be um inspirational people will come and go yeah. but you are dealing with your startup yourself every day and if you don't constantly you know inspire yourself um then no one can help you absolutely and what some of the best advice you have been given um it would be that um respect people the way you want to be respected that's my dad okay it's always like that and uh, any launch uh, or activity coming up which is getting you and the team really excited um So something that just happened um this week was um that we're tying up with the Equal Opportunities Commission in Hong okay. Kong and these guys are you know the holy grail of um, training and work, training and workshops oh, for corporates. Okay. So any sort of case this it goes to the EOC um in any country. Um so we are trying to collaborate with them um and see how the toolkit could help help them and uh, the companies in Hong Kong. Great. So be, great. Yeah. and where do you see yourself and your business in the next 2 uh, to 3 years um i see um the business going uh, to a younger audience definitely that is something i really really am excited to um you know uh, the market i'm i'm excited to penetrate um this this issue of you know um, bullying is so relevant today yep um at a younger audience and i i think the market is huge there there are 2000 secondary schools in hong kong and they could really really benefit from a fun workshop like this so that that would be a two year plan okay uh so now we come to a part of the show which is a quick fire round all right simple okay. brief answers mm-hmm. okay awesome so when people ask you what do you do how do you answer that <laughs> okay <laughs> this is a really good question because no one understands what i do <laughs> i'm telling you it's 
I've got so many blank faces because, um, you know, I've been a design researcher. I've been a design strategist and people are like, uh, what does that mean? Okay. Um, so I, I keep changing my answers. I like to, you know, just see the look on their faces. I sometimes go with, uh, I'm a graphic designer. If I think, you know, the conversation is not going anywhere. Um, but if I want to have a bit of fun, I say, um, uh, I use, I conduct design thinking workshops. So that just gets the conversation going. Um, All right. Great. Yeah. So what's the first word that comes to mind when I say work? Mm -hmm. um, a holic. Family. Balance. Entrepreneurship. Drive. Technology. Um, Overhyped. Food. Um, huh. Um, sorry, I'm going blank here, but That's um, perfectly okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, food would be, um, anything, anything. Let's just let's go with anything, <laughs> okay, and book. Um, time. All right. Uh, what's one piece of tech that you can't live without? My um, Surface Pro. Oh, okay. What do you excel at that people might not realize? Um, I have uh, multiple personalities, and um, that's that's sometimes a good <laughs> thing, believe it or not. Okay. <laughs> it helps me professionally. And what is something you believe in that other people think is insane? Um, that working through the night is better than working during the day. <laughs> All right. And your favorite city globally? Um, Melbourne. Oh, great. Finally, yeah. one last thought or piece of advice that you want to give our listeners, Sonara? Um, yeah, I'd like to say that, you know, there's, um, uh, there's no dearth of information out there for anyone who wants it uh, or any help uh, to anyone who wants and I'm always willing to give um, other people or other growing startups advice um, so they can contact me anytime. I'll always make time for them. Okay, great. Actually, I have some, a friend of mine in the US who does um, global workshops for bullying. I should get you all in touch with each other, actually. Oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was okay. okay. And let our listeners know how they can reach you and also more get more info of the Ultimate Toolkit. Um, so they can um, always go to our Facebook page and uh, send us a message there. We're, we're constantly uh, checking those. But also you can send us a mail um, at uh, info at the ultimate toolkit dot co. Um, yeah. All right. Again, Sonia, thanks for taking the time to talk to us and inspiring our listeners yeah. to start their own yeah. ventures and all the very yeah. best at building feel good design and also uh, the ultimate toolkit. Thank you so much, Rajiv. Have All a great time. Right. Do visit theultimatetoolkit.co and visit us at theishtranpreneur.com to get the show notes and subscribe to our show on all the platforms. Thank you. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. In the meantime, head over to theasianentrepreneur.com and check out show notes and other information to motivate you in your entrepreneurial endeavors.